Ukrainian member of parliament, Alexei Gorcharenko, joins me now from Kyiv. Mr. Gorcharenko, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for the invitation. I, I, you know, I want to start by talking to you about the day the Russian army invaded Ukraine. Do you remember that day and what it was like? Yeah, full-scale invasion started exactly two years ago. I remember this day, and I will remember it for all my life. It was 5 a.m. in the morning when my wife called me from Odessa, my native city, and I was at that time in Kiev, in the capital, for a parliament meeting, saying that she hears explosions in the city. So I woke up, and I heard explosions, too, and it was clear that something which we were uh, afraid of uh, really happened. Russia started full-scale invasion against my country. What went through your mind at that time, and especially when you were on the phone with your wife and hearing the fear in her voice? Yeah, it was awful, and like feeling that I am in hundred kilometers, hundreds of kilometers from them at such moment when they need me, but at the same time, it was clear that I, I need to be in Kiev. That day, I joined territorial defense. I took weapons in my hands, and uh, I was in territorial defense till Russians retreated from Kiev. And since that day, there have been missile and drone strikes. Uh, th those are a constant threat uh, in Ukrainian cities right across the country. Um, tell me if the Ukrainian people are still constantly living minute by minute in fear. Unfortunately, just like minutes ago, my wife uh, again reached me from Odessa. I am again now in Kiev for parliament meeting and said that it was a new drone attack and uh, we have people killed in Odessa, and uh, that's awful. It happens every day. From one side, you, you got used to this, uh, but from another side, you, you can't be used to things like this, never. There was talk early on that Russia would take Ukraine in a matter of days, if not weeks. Clearly, that has not been the case. Talk to me about the fight that the Ukrainian people have put up against this Russian invasion. Yeah, many in the West considered that Ukraine would fail in three, four days. Now we have 626 days that we are fighting, and we will fight uh, further. We don't have any other option because uh, Russia is committing genocide against Ukrainians on the occupied territories. So in order to survive, we need to win this war. We need to protect our country. That's what we are doing. And uh, I'm sure that at the end of the day, we will win this war. When you walk around the city, are other Ukrainians, are they hopeful? What are their attitudes like? Um, definitely people are tired, exhausted. But it's not a kind of like uh, exhaustion uh, or fatigue that people are saying, OK, we're ready to give up. No, it's not. People, uh, they want. Uh, to see a peaceful life, definitely. And they understand that it can be only by defeating the aggressor. So people are ready to fight, but definitely they want to see the, like, the light in the end of the tunnel. That's very important. This week, Russia took the small Ukrainian city of Avdivka. Uh, what significance does the city have? Really, from uh, like strategical point of view, I can't say that it is a very strategical town. It were, by the way, it was a small town before invasion, near 30,000 people. Now it's completely destroyed with just maybe hundreds still living there. So it's not a big victory for Russia, but it is victory. And we lost uh, this town, and it's painful for us. Uh, but at the same time, I want to... Um, like stress your attention to show you our successes in the Black Sea, for example, where Ukraine having no navy in reality, but we destroyed the significant part of Russian Black Sea fleet. We kicked off Russians from the western part of the Black Sea. We opened the commercial navigation and agricultural export from Ukraine, which is important for millions of people throughout the whole planet. So, so we have successes. But also we have a big difficulties. 
President Vladimir Zelensky and our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have had a very strong relationship. Uh, the, the Ukrainian president also spoke to the House of Commons. Uh, how key has been that support from Canada? It's very important for us. We're very thankful to people of Canada, to Canadian government, parliament, for all support Ukraine is receiving. Thank you very much for this. And uh, I'm sure that Canada continue to, will continue to be a leader in these efforts. And I hope that Canada can do more, especially in military, from military point of view, because we are not short in people in Ukraine. We are not short in courage. We are, but we are short in the weaponry we are receiving from our allies. And we hope that uh, with the support of Canada, with the push from Canada, that more weaponry will come to Ukraine to help us to win this war. Certainly here in this country, the Liberal government has said that their support for Ukraine is unwavering. But there was a recent survey done here by the Angus Reid Institute that found a quarter of Canadians believe that this country right now, Canada, is offering, quote, too much support to Ukraine in its fight. Uh, and that's up from May 2022. What, what do you make of that? And does that concern you that we are seeing polls like this where, you know, it says Canadian support for sending over uh, money and equipment is, is dropping? Definitely it concerns me. And I want to address these people saying, uh, I just, just don't want ever, ever that Canada will be attacked. I just want you to leave uh, under peaceful sky. But to do this, we need to stop tyrants. Uh, because tyrants, they're like geopolitical maniacs. They will never stop themselves. We should stop them. They only can be stopped. And if Canada will not, and other countries will not help Ukraine now to stop a Russian tyrant, other tyrants in the world will decide that they can also attack. And sooner or later, it can also hurt Canadian people. So in order to restore international law, in order to restore international order, Ukraine needs to win this war. So please help us to do this. And also don't forget about our women and children, as well as the Canadian women and children. They just want to live peacefully in peaceful countries. And we have all the right to do this. And I know that for always Canada was on the right side of history. And I'm sure that this time Canada also will be there and will help us to stop this uh, tyranny. Since the war broke out in, in Gaza, there has been this conversation about where aid should go and the allocation of resources, not only in this country, but in other countries as well. Has the conversation, has the point that you are, are making about you know, the, the larger reason why uh, Canada and Western countries should still support Ukraine, has that been more difficult because of other conflicts going on in the world? Definitely. Uh, more fire in the world uh, and uh, major powers are distracted and people's attention is distracted. That's why I'm sure that Putin stands behind what had happened in the Middle East, because only he benefited from what had happened there. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, that this axis of chaos, Russia, North Korea, Iran, and standing behind them, China, that they will continue to set fire in the world. And uh, we need to stop it in order to protect uh, security of all of us. You were at the Munich Security Conference, which ended just a couple of days ago. What kind of conversations were you able to have there with other leaders? Um, many conversations, very important conference. Very important for Ukraine is becoming a member of NATO. And Canada is a strong member of NATO can also help us to achieve this, and I hope we'll do this. Also, definitely military support from the United States. That is something which we desperately need right now. When we see all these debates in the U.S. Congress, I understand that debates, democracy, it takes time, but we don't have this time. We're dying every day, and uh, every day of delay in this supply is uh, very painful for us, and we are pained by lives of our best people. So we hope very much that United States will finally fix this and Ukraine will receive military support. It was promised too. Also don't forget that Ukraine in 1994 voluntarily gave up the third biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. 
under the guarantees of the United States of America and United Kingdom and Russia. Oh, yeah. Russia is clear they broke all of their uh, promises. But what will be a signal to the world if Ukraine, which gave up its nuclear weaponry, is now attacked and will not be helped? Uh, that will be the only one message. Go nukes yourself. And that will be a very bad scenario for the whole world. I don't want to ask you to predict the future, but do you see a glimmer of peace on the horizon? For the moment, not. I don't believe that Putin wants peace. He doesn't want any peace. He still thinks that he can achieve his goals. Now I think he's waiting for elections in the United States. So maybe the United States will step out. Uh, so if we really want peace, we need to show strength to Putin. He doesn't understand any other language except this. We appreciate your time tonight on the eve of a grim anniversary in your country. Thank you very much.